Okay. Welcome to the study group. Welcome, Chuck. Thank you, Derek. Welcome, Kitty. Yep. So today we're going to talk about giving freely. And this study is called Give Freely. And so Chuck found another great study slide for us to look at. And if mm. you kind of want to. Yeah, yeah. Toss I, it. I thought this image worked well for this. For this idea, so the the it's giving freely is just half of the message. The other half is the fact that we've received freely, and in response to having received freely, it's only natural that we should desire to give freely. So, looking upon this sunset and and the beauty of the natural environment, you know, Jesus with his apostles in this particular moment that captured by this artist, I think is very fitting in that res in that respect that we have been given so much. We've been given a lot on the physical level, on the mind. We have these minds that can comprehend spirit and know God. And right. we also have spirit in our hearts as well that helps us to feel the presence of God. So that's what we'll be talking about is this idea of receiving and giving and how that creates a dynamic process of growth and development and bringing into reality the possibilities of spirit that can only really happen that way. All right. Yeah. So that kind of leads us to this first slide then. All right. Or the first quote, if you want to go sure. ahead. And yeah, let me go ahead and read this. So this is Jesus talking to the apostles, and he says, as I was just sort of hinting at, <laughs> freely have you received. Therefore, freely should you give of the truth of heaven. And in the giving... Of the, and in the giving, will this truth multiply and show forth the increasing light of saving grace, even as you minister it? So this is in the context of Jesus, of course, sharing with his apostles and disciples and whoever else came into their arena of influence, this truth of heaven. And the truth of heaven, of course, is the reality of the nature of God. That God is actually our father. We have father, mother, divine parents, and we become their children as a consequence. <laughs> and the knowing of this, the realization of this, is what gives us eternal life. So this is a tremendous gift that Jesus has given. And the apostles, to the extent that they've comprehended this, <laughs> have received it freely. And he's saying that having, having been given this truth of heaven, having realized who we really are and what's really going on in our relationship with God, then we're naturally motivated to share this with others. And in so doing, that truth multiplies. Mm. Its presence on the planet, its influence in the affairs, in human affairs grows and literally multiplies as a result of sharing this truth because Everyone who hears it and believes it and understands it is raised to this higher level of realization of who they are, who we are, and right. what our role can be. And this idea of saving grace, I don't know, maybe you want to say something about that. I think that's a really interesting concept, very subtle, this idea of grace. Well, for my concept is... Grace is a gift from God. Yes, right. And so, and we're given it, we're given it freely. And so, as we act in grace, the grace grows. Yeah. And it's kind of our offering and our gift back to God. It's the only way we can use His gifts, is right? By acting out in that mm -hmm. in His way, in that grace. So, so it's one gift that we can actually contribute towards. Mm -hmm. We can collectively have a, a creative relationship with the grace that we're given. We can grow as we spread it and act in accordance. Yes. It. Yeah, exactly. It, and it happens even as you minister it, he says. Yeah, so, the whole notion of the idea of it's better to give than to receive, and we hear that all the time, but the spiritual gifts that you do receive from giving mm -hmm. is right. beneficial as well. If you look at it just from a selfish perspective. <laughs> right, right. right. That, that's especially true on the spiritual level. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why it's true, which he's explaining here. Because when you give, you grow. And when you give, those to whom you give, especially spiritual truth, they also grow. 
right. it creates new possibilities new and potentials. building on what we were kind of talking about in the last place of the friendship with god is that it's mm. not like you're giving because you're it's required of you right or it's this laborious task mm -hmm. it's actually in accordance with the nature of god to give freely and you yeah, can, right it's in god's nature and so then acting in that friendly nature then is to give freely because mm -hmm. you, know, you want to see people do well you know what they need and so you look out for them exactly so that's maybe even part of the grace idea is that we become more godlike by connecting with god in this way yeah, yeah. so that is, that's a huge huge gift that we receive and can, can pass on and that brings us to the next quote all right let's do it so this next quote i'll read this uh, again it's just jesus talking he says uh, and th just to set this up, this is an interesting scene. This is where um, Matthew had just been called into service to work with the apostles, and he threw a big party <laughs> at his house and attended by publicans and sinners, <laughs> oh, yeah. people that were considered to be maybe not exactly the spiritual elite from the perspective of the priesthood of the day. But yet yeah, Jesus was there. He was having a good time. They were drinking. They were making merry, and there was this criticism being murmured around the room it's like oh why if jesus you're such a spiritual leader and teacher why are you hanging out with these people right because matthew was a tax collector <laughs> and right, right. um jesus response to that included this comment where he said it is not the father's will that his children should partake only of the serious things of life let me repeat I have come that my brethren in the flesh may have joy, gladness, and life more abundantly. So this speaks to the nature of spirit, I think, that spirit brings joy and gladness into our lives. And it's a convivial spirit. It's a friendly spirit. It's a spirit that enjoys good company and enjoying those moments when we can relax and just have fun together. And that's what he was enjoying with these people in this, at this occasion. So this idea of having life more abundantly. Yeah, yeah, get into that. Yeah, Thank we're going to expand on that. Well, the next quote actually takes us directly into that, if you want to just go ahead with that. Okay. So we go with, in the Arantia Book, paper 117, where the author says, When man consecrates his will to the doing of the Father's will, when man gives God all that he has, then does God make that man more than he is. That's a pretty exciting quote. Mm -hmm. Especially like kind of I see why you're building up to this because kind of all we can give God is that act and mm -hmm. the attempt to act in that grace that is in accordance with God's nature. So when we can do that wholeheartedly, it's – that's why I call it a surrender, or a lot of people call it a surrender or whatever, but when we do that wholeheartedly, then there's an in, an enhancement, an increase. An increase. Because we are blending with something that's spirit. Blending with, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. We're blending with something greater than ourselves. Mm -hmm. This whole idea of doing the Father's will. Then we become more than we were. Mm -hmm. And this also applies in all of our relationships, I think which is why this principle is kind of so important of freely receiving and freely giving because that's a that's a that the the love multiplies right right there's some kind of a dynamic process where you give and then you there's a reception and then a giving in return that's greater than that's received and that's responded to with even a, a greater response so there's this dynamic increase in love and spirit that naturally grows in this process of giving everything you have to your relationships, particularly to God. I think one thing that really helped me was kind of just philosophically coming to the awareness that all love comes from God mm. and that it's only really shared. Yeah. You want to read that next quote? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a natural uh, progression for sure. All true love. So, all true love is from God, and man receives the divine affection as he himself bestows his love or this love upon his fellows. So it's really that's why we are giving freely because we are sharing what we received freely, which mm -hmm. is actually really good. 
Right. And that's why it's a little counterintuitive to what we see in this transactional society. Mm -hmm. Or everything's a contract. Yeah. And you're expected to, you know, something costs something. Yeah. And what they're saying here is there, it's going to cost something and you give all that you can. But when you really understand that you can't really do too much other than give your will, like be a part of this blending cooperation, just be a part of and mm -hmm. be a cooperative volunteer. Volunteer, yes. Right. And then from that pattern, we then volunteer our gifts. Right? Yes. So it's this big volunteer chain. Right. There's something about gifting. There's a energy or a a um a growth potential in gifting that's not found in other types of transactions. Mm. It's a quality of engagement when you give freely and not even barter right here. It's not what we're talking about here. We're not making a deal with God saying, well, you know, I'm going to do this for you. Now, what are you going to do for me? That's not the spirit of it. Right. The spirit of it is just to give freely out of the joy of giving because that's there's self-realization that naturally follows from that or is part of that. Well, even. I know there's a few times in the ranch book where they say, do you not realize what you have? <laughs> what you've been given. Yes. Yeah, what you've been given, like with yeah. the thought adjuster and with all sorts of other yeah, spirit right, help. Right, exactly. Just, just life in general. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. But it, I think maybe our minds are, are kind of wrapped around things that are more survival-based or material-based mm -hmm. a lot, and those take precedence. Mm-hmm. But the real important things of the spiritual kingdom, the spiritual right. identity, which really should take precedence because they are more important. Those are the higher values. Mm -hmm. Those are the real guiding values that give meaning to life. Yeah. I mean, we all have to engage in transactional exchanges. You know, we have jobs. We have things we do to make earn money. You know, the practical demands of life require that we enter into all kinds of transactional relationships. But above and beyond all that, guiding all of that is, is this potential for a spirit of gifting. And mm -hmm. even in our jobs and other roles where we're being paid to do something or whatever, we can still approach it with an attitude of giving beyond yeah. Yeah. what's required. And I would say especially, adding. Adding, it, especially like as you go by, as you pass by, because uh -huh. today's day and age or Currently, people aren't really socializing a lot, so it's real important to add to the social value that's there. Yeah. If, even if that's like, you know, making a nice comment or a compliment. It's or just, just a smile. If you, Yeah, unless you're wearing a mask or whatever, <laughs> well, but nonetheless. Yeah, <laughs> Pull down your mask for a second and smile. <laughs> but still, yeah. things that, yeah, I, I try to say, you know, yeah. a, a kind joke right. or a kind compliment something. or something like that to engage people just to. Yeah. Keep it light and friendly. And if you can feel the spirit of God in the person that you're interacting with, that's a huge thing because then you feel it in yourself as well. I mean, I don't know. It's sort of chicken and egg, which comes first, but one leads to the other. And when you feel the spirit of God in yourself, you want to share that. And that's part of what this is all about. Yeah, yeah. Because we've received that from God. And it's like you can't just hold it within yourself. It's, well, it's, it's a bit just of a, too, it's too cool. Well, it's a bit of a spirit <laughs> leading. Yeah, right. So the spirit is kind of pushing you. But it's also this great and wonderful thing, you sure, know, like the sure. pearl of great price or the treasure in the field, you know, these parables that Jesus taught where you give anything. It's worth everything to have this love from God. You know, the great gifts of the spirit are have value beyond anything material. And when you discover them and they become real in your life, then you want other people to you want to share it. It's just natural. And I think it's important. Thank you for that. That you know people understand what it means to be of the kingdom and of the world, and that sometimes, or well, a lot of the times, the world will kind of keep you stifling those moments of your heart reaching out mm. to your brethren mm -hmm. and wanting mm -hmm. to do things for them, and. Because in the back of your mind, you know, society might tell you that this isn't a fair transaction. Right. Or some other. But if your heart is leading you to do something, it's important to to answer that call. And I'm just going to go ahead and read this next quote. Yes. It kind of touches on that. And this is Jesus speaking. Mm -hmm. And he says, And when the feelings of service for your fellow men arise within your soul, do not stifle them. 
When the emotions of love for your neighbor well up within your heart, give expression to such urges of affection in intelligent ministry to the real needs of your fellows. So building on that which I was just talking about, Jesus mm -hmm. sees the importance here of the soul and the heart and how they find expression in one another in serving in intelligent ministry the need the real needs mm -hmm. of your fellows right and these feelings well up mm -hmm. he says when the emotions of love for your neighbor well up within your heart mm -hmm. i mean that's such a beautiful way of phrasing that or expressing that that this the presence of god within us and the our engagement with spirit and the spirit of truth and all the other ministries sponsor this kind of internal, this kind of inner, this quality in our inner life where we have these wellings up, you know, where love responds to being loved. You know, the feeling of being loved, you love when you feel loved. That's just a natural human response. Right, right. So when we have this feeling of being loved by God, it's only natural that there'll be this welling up that they refer to, and that often can find its expression in the form of what the Arantia book refers to as service. But this is service with a very broad definition. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like we need to redefine service. Yeah. Just like religion or something like and, that. And love and everything else. Right. It's just a desire to want to help, to do something good for someone else, yeah. just because for the joy of doing it. Like in one of our recent uh, study groups, we talked about the occasion when Jesus and Gan had returned the lost child to its mother, and they were just commenting on it afterwards when they talked about it, realizing what a joy that was, mm. how much they enjoyed that. It was just, a, you know, it made them. It makes you feel good when you do something like that, when you help somebody just out of your heart. Oh yeah. Well, I know personally being the recipient of some great gifts. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. <laughs> is uh yeah the joy then that i experience now when i can gift because i know how to gift really well now because i know to seek what people need mm. and what can help them grow and what they'll enjoy mm -hmm. and this being christmas season and everything like that this is a good time to talk about these gifts and i feel like yeah it's almost an art it's an art and it's also i just want to talk about personally the pleasure that you feel yeah. knowing that you got something that the other person or your even your kitty or whoever doesn't know about like when it's your birthday or somebody else is gonna yeah. get a gift uh-huh and you're hiding a gift from them or <laughs> whatever it is but you know they're gonna use yeah. it and they're gonna love it they're gonna yeah. enjoy it and that's kind of how God is with us, mm -hmm. that there's all these gifts that are hidden in the closet for us because we haven't opened them up yet and, and talked about them with him. Right. But nonetheless, he's still excited for us to open up all these gifts and to start using them mm -hmm. to better things for our own advancement and for Absolutely. everyone else's advancement. Yeah. And the gifts of the Spirit have infinite potential. They continue to unfold into eternity, the significance and the power and the joy and the, you know, all of that. Mm -hmm. So this, that's why this thing with God is so important. You know, this relationship with God idea that Jesus revealed in this whole new way is so important because that opens the door to this expanding present. <laughs> it's like the closet gets bigger and bigger. <laughs> well, I think that's a good point. And we can maybe to just expand on a demonstration yeah, sure. of Jesus being the way sure. it's, because we don't really have the words to talk about that dynamic uh -huh. love, but Jesus' life is the perfect demonstration it, of that dynamic love. It is, indeed. So, if you want to go ahead and read yeah, this Yeah, let's, next let's go into this next one. Yeah, this is a really interesting story. This is the one of, yeah, I don't you know. You want to set it up just quickly for us? Yeah, I'll just set it up a little bit before I actually read, the quote, this quote, read this quote. Um, this is an, what we're going to see here is Jesus selflessly engaging with a situation where someone needs help. And that's a kind of a gifting. It's a kind of a presence of mind, too, and a presence of heart and a willingness to take action, not just like hold ideas in theory, but to actually be a player on the ground and make things better by the things you do. So Jesus was all about that. <laughs> anyway, this is a situation where uh, 
he was waiting with, I forget if this is with Gannett or not. I think it was mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were waiting to uh, board a ship. I'll, I'll just read the quote here. It says, while t tearing at the ship landing, and this is where, this is uh, Ter Tarentum. This is when uh, Jesus and Gannett and his father, Gannett's father were traveling around all through that part of the world. They say, while tearing at the ship landing, waiting for the boat to unload cargo, the travelers observed a man mistreating his wife. As was his custom, Jesus intervened in behalf of the person subjected to attack. <laughs> but the way he did this is just like, I don't know. Smooth. It's so Jesus. <laughs> he says, he stepped up behind the irate husband and tapping him gently on the shoulder said, my friend, may I speak with you a moment in private? May I speak with you in private for a moment? And I didn't want to include all of this on the slide, but I can just, you know, read a little bit more of the story here sure. from the book itself. So this is just so much fun to hear how Jesus handled this. Uh, so when he did that, uh, the angry man was nonplussed by such an approach. He thought, well, you know, he, mm -hmm. he totally surprised. And after a moment of embarrassing hesitation, stammered out, uh, er, why, yes, what do you want with me? <laughs> when Jesus had led him to one side, he said, my friend, I perceive that something terrible must have happened to you. I very much desire that you tell me what could happen to such a strong man to lead him to attack his wife, the mother of his children, and that right out here before all eyes. I am sure you must feel that you have some good reason for this assault. What did the woman do to deserve such treatment from her husband? As I look upon you, I think I discern in your face the love of justice, if not the desire to show mercy. I venture to say that if you found me out by the wayside, attacked by robbers, you would unhesitatingly rush to my rescue. <laughs> I dare say you have done much I, I dare say you have done many such brave things in the course of your life. Now, my friend, tell me what is the matter? Did the woman do something wrong, or did you foolishly lose your head and thoughtlessly assault her? And they go on to say that it was not so much what he said that touched this man's heart as the kindly look and the sympathetic smile which Jesus bestowed upon him at the conclusion of his remarks. And then the, and then the man said, I perceive that you are a priest of the cynics. <laughs> he could tell he was, you know, had spiritual. Something. <laughs> yeah, something special there. And I'm thankful you restrained me. My wife has done no great wrong. She is a good woman, but she irritates me by the manner in which she picks on me in public and I lose my temper. Mm. <laughs> I am sorry for my lack of self-control and I promise to try to live up to my former pledge to one of your brothers who taught me the better way many years ago. I promise you. So this kind of shows how... Jesus took this situation and appealed to the best in this man. And mm -hmm. that he had this, and he looked on him with this uh, sympathetic smile. So this to me is just so kind of, uh, it kind of hits me in the heart too, because I think of times, you know, when I'm not at my best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine. So, I mean, in other words, Jesus could have come up and like grab the guy and like beat him up or something. You know what I mean? Right, right, he right. He could have showed right. anger toward yeah. this man to try and stop him. You know, right. and that might be even often part of our God concept, you know, that we think God is angry with us when we screw up. Right. But here's Jesus showing, no, no, no. <laughs> he has understanding sympathy and he doesn't approach this man with anger. Instead, he calls to the best in him. And that brought out the best in him. So there's a really deep and profound lesson there, I think, in how he handled that. But he did it spontaneously. It was just a situation that came up in the course of the day, and he saw that he could help, and he helped in this, you know, beautifully positive way. Yeah, yeah. I, I love, you know, growing up in the 80s and 90s, it's <laughs> like all these movies that were out was all about the guy who was this alpha, but he was kind of like a rebel and a trickster. And he was always really smooth. 
and he could always kind of maybe pull a fast one in on his way to mm-hmm. get his way. Yeah. And every once in a while, maybe he'd show that the, the protagonist would show that he was a good guy deep down. Uh huh. But no one has, in my life, I've never come across anyone who then could demonstrate what Jesus has demonstrated for me, where you're using all those creative, tactful skills in a way to help people. Mm. Right. It, not that, let me rephrase that. No one on film has done that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, right. right. But many people in my life. Uh huh. And I'm blessed for that. Those are gifts that I've received by knowing these people. Right, right. But the whole goal being for your internal value structure, knowing that you're being loyal to God, and that value structure is different than the kingdom of man value mm-hmm. structure. Mm-hmm. And so, in doing that, this serving and feeding the best qualities of someone looking to use all of your skills and traits in order to maximize a victory. And what is a victory? It's not me only standing here. It's all of us standing here smiling and doing yeah, well right. and growing. And there's a future in us. It's adding to the good in the world. Mm-hmm. That's what I see in Jesus when he responded to this situation. It's interesting that in um, other places, Jesus talks about vengeance as being probably the, one of the very worst <laughs> paths you can take in response to a situation. You know, he condemned vengeance mm. and taking and acts of revenge, you know, because mm. someone could have come up in that situation and said, well, I'm going to take the part of the wife and I'm going to seek put revenge on you for the wife. Because they appear to be the victim at this right, perspective, this right. vantage point. So, a lot of the yeah. movies we see, you know, they celebrate vengeance as this high moral act when in fact it isn't because it doesn't add to the good in the world. It just creates more conflict. Yeah, man. And I've always talked about how this is Jesus' demonstration of showing the new paradigm, the old yeah. paradigm was like David versus Goliath type of thing. Mm-hmm. And now the new paradigm is like, affectionate intelligent ministry right <laughs> forgiving kindness yeah yeah forgiving kindness right patient tolerance exactly and in that we see the giving and the receiving well this kind of like leads right up to this next quote actually what we we're just talking about if i can mm-hmm. read it yeah go for it so this is speaking about jesus here the jewish rabbis had long debated the question who is my neighbor Jesus came presenting the idea of active and spontaneous kindness, a love of one's fellow men so genuine that it expanded the neighborhood to include the whole world, thereby making all men one's neighbor. So this is the new paradigm, the expanded network of neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Because if we are all unified in the family of God, Right. We're, We're all, all children of God. We're all tethered in the thread of light and love. And this is where our real value in family lies. And not the separation of neighbor and non neighbor. Mm-hmm, which is God, more tribal. Sure, sure. Yeah. And God already chose us all. Right. It's, you know, so it's like we're all part of that neighborhood. We're all loved by God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So that universalizes a quality of relationship between all of us, that we all have this, we all share this, and this is a wonderful thing that we should treasure, this idea that the whole planet (laughs) is our neighborhood. Yeah. And that we can look at every person that we share this planet with as a neighbor, as a child, fellow child of God. And then that even extends beyond this planet, of course into eternity as we send, ascend beyond this lifetime. That neighborhood's going to grow and we're going to discover, wow, we got all kinds of cool neighbors that we never even dreamed of that we're going to be associating with and having adventures with and going through eternity with. But it begins here. So cultivating the spirit. And the thing about neighbors, you know, you want to help your neighbor. Like if you go outside and your neighbor's like – car needs a jump jump or something like that or he's trying to lift something that's too heavy or whatever you just naturally go and help you know we we serve there's a natural service and help motivation that's part of a neighborly 
being a good neighbor. Yeah, there's a good metaphor in that word, in that yeah. term, neighbor. Yeah, it's a wonderful idea. But I love how then that same take that little microcosm, expand uh -huh. it to everyone. Right. That's that same feeling, you know, that friendly neighbor. Right. Who's, out there who's in need. And when your neighbor helps you, you're going to want to help them. Oh, yeah. And then there's that growth again where you receive and then you give. You give more than you received and then that grows the, 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 the quantity of good in the world as a result and this, this good spirit. Amen. Well, in this season, yes. I wish you a Merry Christmas. Indeed. And you guys, Merry Christmas. May your gifts be spiritual and let's be mindful of the gifts that we're given and that the gifts that everybody else has and that they're all waiting to be unwrapped and shared with one another. So let's kind of have our opportunity to give thanks and praise and celebrate this wonderful opportunity yeah. of, of abundance and life abundantly. <laughs> right, <laughs> including Jesus' gift of himself. Wow, what a gift. To this world. What a gift. What right, a, right. What a gift that was. Maybe we'll talk about that. Maybe we'll do something on Christmas more. About yeah, that. we got more on this topic coming okay. up. All right. Well, thanks, Chuck. Great work. Sure. Thanks, Derek. And thanks, you guys. We will see you next time. All right.